Hi guys, welcome to Tutor IMG's short medical series. Today the topic that we're going to be discussing is about consent. So medical legal consent, which is a very important concept in um, ethics. So to begin with, what you guys need to understand is that um, consent um, helps to protect against uh, claims of negligence okay so for consent to actually protect a physician against claims of negligence there are certain parameters that it needs to fulfill firstly consent needs to be voluntary okay secondly consent should be given by a patient with full capacity meaning that a patient should be able to medically um, mentally sorry understand what is being um, said to them and the treatment that is being proposed Next, uh, consent should always be informed. If it's not informed consent, it will not protect the physician against negligence claims. What do we mean by informed consent? Informed consent means that when you're discussing the particular intervention with the patient, um, you should cover points like diagnosis. You should be covering points of where you are going to uh, disclose to the patient the nature of the intervention you are going to disclose to them the expected outcome of that particular intervention, intervention, right? And also the expected outcome if the intervention were to be refused by the patient. Next, you should also um, help the patient understand all the alternative treatments that you can offer them if they refuse the intervention um, under discussion. Also, the most important aspect is to cover the material risks that the patient faces. What are material, material risks? These are going to be basically the most common risks encountered, as well as the risks that carry the highest um, you know, complication possibilities, like risks that will lead to loss of function uh, of the body or lead to pain uh, long-standing. So if it's informed consent, it will protect against negligence. So what will informed consent, how can you prove that the consent given by the patient was informed? Please remember the most important aspect of that is documentation. Documentation of the consent discussion is one of the most important um, protections that a physician can you know, have. So documentation of the informed consent discussion means that it's a dated, recorded discussion on the patient file. Okay. Uh, please remember a simple signature on a document, consent document is not enough. A witnessed signature on a consent document is not enough. What you need is a dated, recorded, informed um, consent discussion properly recorded in the patient's file and you can never go back and change the date or alter the record because that equals um, an actual criminal offense. So some of the other important aspects of consent include the types of consent. So please remember that there are two important types of consent. One is implied consent, which is the kind of consent that doesn't really need documentation. And it's also the kind of consent that the physician can just um, sort of assume that the patient's given them um, whenever, you know, to whenever they're supposed to be discussing the patient's case within the circle of care. Okay. The patient can, of course, um, withhold this consent, right? In which case, of course, the patient will have to say that I don't want you discussing my case with anybody, right? Um, and that means that they are withholding the implied consent as well. But otherwise, unless they say those words, the physician can assume this implied consent um, because implied consent will help the physician improve the care given to the patient. Okay. So the minute the patient comes in and voluntarily gives their history and discusses their complaint, um, consent is implied. 
The other kind of consent is expressed consent. And this is the consent that we need whenever we are going to be proposing interventions for the patient. So um, any kind of procedure or intervention that could result in injury to the patient, that could result in pain, right, or altered function in the patient, as we discussed before, this is um, these are all going to be the kind of interventions that you need expressed consent for. Okay, so please remember handouts are never, um, or telling a patient, you know, visit this website and um, um, you should be able to get the information about what we're going to do for you. Saying things like that or handing the patient some literature to read will not stand up in court. It is not a good defense against negligence. There is no uh, alternative to the signed documented consent discussion. Okay, so the last thing I want to discuss in relevance to consent is delegation of the uh, discussion, consent discussion. Can it be delegated by the physician to somebody else? The answer is yes, it can be delegated to somebody else as long as the physician is convinced that the person doing the discussion is fully informed themselves and is able to carry out the discussion um, and cover all of the important points we discussed right at the start about informed consent. Okay, so um, those are all of the very, very important board questions that come in relevance to consent. Now, if you like the video, please guys do subscribe to the channel and we will keep adding um, short videos to help you cover ethics and other medical uh, specialties really well for the boards. Thank you very much.